Now, artificial intelligence, as it relates to assessment, has become a big issue in recent um, times. And you need to have some understanding of what this may mean for assessment. Um, now, it's still being worked out in many cases, but there are various processes we can consider around artificial intelligence and assessment. Um, there's the authentic authenticity of student work, whether or not it's students' work on its own or the degree of assistance they've received in completing that work and the degree to which an AI tools may have provided that assistance, be it in writing code, be it in writing essays or completing assessment tasks or homework tasks or whatever is involved. Now, as part of that, we there is various plagiarism detection tools that we use, particularly around written work but also can be used around software tools. Now, this is becoming increasingly problematic as the tools are getting better and better, um, and it's making it harder and harder for these detection tools to pick up on similarities. But they still do exist, and you'll see them used in many schools and universities for that matter. Um, there's the format of assessment and how we can use different formats to make assessment um, either easier or harder to be uh, conducted or, or to use AI around various aspects of assessment. So if it's a relatively complex, uh, say, software project that involves working with clients in a real-world situation and a whole, whole lot of other aspects, then that's going to be harder for an, a generative AI tool to simply create the entire response. Now, it certainly may be able to support the creation of various aspects of those responses and you may incorporate that then into um, the task and accept that students are going to utilize AI tools in various elements without necessarily it being able to replicate the entire um, response. So that's probably the most common mechanism at the moment but there's also other approaches such as having students do presentations um, which make it much harder for them to use an AI. And this is, of course, it's a video presentation where you've got a video generated avatar. Um, but also having students demonstrate um, in your presence, being able to do code. So there's a whole range of different approaches. Now, in the main, it's not a, as big an issue in schools as you might think. You should have a really good understanding of what your students are capable of through all the monitoring you make of your students' progress, you know what they should or shouldn't be able to be able to produce. And if for homework they produce something that's well beyond that, or if it's part of an assignment where they're working at home, then you get a pretty good indication that they're receiving assistance. Students have always received assistance from their parents, from their siblings, um, all the way through to um, companies that will write assignments for them or do code for them, other mechanisms like that. So the more you know your student, then the more you can pick up on things. Now, if you then pick up on them, you have to do something about that. And that's when you can um, bring them in and have them do a task in a more monitored environment, such as where you can see them do the coding or and so forth. The other thing is just simply to ask them to explain aspects of their work. Um, explain what they meant in, with this paragraph or this piece of code. And if they are flummoxed by that and, and can't really explain how and why it works, that's again a pretty good indication that they've received some assistance and can't replicate that um, on their own. So another few aspects around setting good element, good assessment that um, can disrupt the use of AI tools is having um, criteria that is not too generic, um, providing good effective feedback so that students are actually wanting to get do the task themselves so that they improve and they learn from that process. And the process of your assessment development can be assisted by AI tools. Similarly, um, providing feedback to your students can be assisted by AI tools. You can put their responses in and it will then analyze them against the criteria and you can use that as a way of giving them assistance as well. Now, your students can do that themselves 
they can put their own work into the AI and have it look at that and provide them a feedback on how to improve. So there's lots of issues around AI and assessment that's still being worked out. So it's a complex area at the moment, but certainly it's an area of focus for education. And over the next uh, little while, I'm sure we'll come up with different policies and processes um, to incorporate the appropriate use of AI um, in assessment items. Now, I've provided you with um, some of the debates happening around AI in schools. Um, while ChatGTP was the um, most popular uh, app to ever break 100 million users in, I think it was five days, well, a short amount of time, um, it was also the m most quickly banned tool ever in Australian education history. Within um, three days, it was banned in every single state and territory by their state systems. Um, private systems weren't anywhere near as quick to ban things. But we're now seeing a step back from that. Um, none the, probably the main reason is it's being incorporated into a whole lot of productivity tools. And systems don't want to give up being able to use search engines or Microsoft Word and Office applications. And because these tools, um, generative text is being incorporated into those, um, it's sort of by default meant that they've had to uh, pair back on the strong stance they originally took. Now, education by its nature is conservative. So rightly so, whenever something new comes about that um, schools and education systems haven't had time to understand fully, then they put restrictions on it until they can understand it and be able to incorporate it inappropriately. Um, so it wasn't, it was totally expected that uh, the bans would be put into place, but now we're seeing them um, be addressed in more mature ways quite quickly uh, in that respect. But it'll still be a subject of debate for quite a while to come in how we address particularly aspects of assessment in an authentic way.